What's up everybody? My name is Elliot, but you can call me the Motory Notary. And if you can't tell by the trees, guardrail, and uh, dump truck behind me, I am in New Jersey, but I'm here to do some pretty cool stuff. And behind me, I have two of my favorite cars because although this is a Volvo channel and a car review channel and a classic car channel, most importantly, it is a Corvette channel. So let me tell you about these two cars and why this older C5 Corvette just might be better than this brand new C8. Guys, Corvettes are awesome. You know it, I know it, everybody knows it. And this is a chance for you to have one of your own because I've partnered up with veteran-owned small business, fanofthem.com, to bring you guys the chance to win this 1999 C5 Corvette. All you have to do is go to the link in my description, fanofthem.com slash Elliot, buy a limited edition collectible, and you'll get entered for a chance to win this very C5 Corvette that I will be interacting with during this entire video. It's a great opportunity to directly support the growth of my channel, and you'll get entered for a chance to win a Corvette of your very own. So it's a great opportunity. Go to the link in my description, fanofthem.com slash Elliot, and get entered for a chance to win this C5 Corvette. All right. Let's get back into it. So what we have here, guys, are two cars carrying the same name, but practically couldn't be more different. There's 24 years of age between this Corvette, a 2023 C8, and this 1999 C5. And to determine which one's better, well, we first gotta go over all of the things that changed in 24 short years, which is no short time, well, at all. Starting out with the 1999 C5 Corvette. Now this was the third year of the C5, and the C5 was a massive departure from the C4 before it. First of all, the body styling is completely different, and that's in part because it was an entire redesign from the C4, which was an entire redesign of the C3. So we're really in the peak Corvette innovation age right here, starting with the C5. Some people may love it. I think it's pretty timeless. It's very round compared to the C4 wedge shape. And with the convertible, it really actually highlights how wide this thing is back here. Look at that booty. I mean, she is wide. Of course, the other things here is it's the 90s, but Corvettes have always been the leaders of technology. So when you look at the interior, you gotta put that in perspective. Everything in here is very nice. You've got leather. Of course, this one's a manual, which is great. The only downside is that's the radio out of every truck and everything GM was making at the time. That being said, if you move over to the driver's side, you actually have like a customizable information center. It's not like we think of today where it's an entire screen, but the little screen at the bottom shows you so many different gauge readouts. It's pretty amazing, actually really advanced for the time. Of course, one of the main differences we're gonna see here is uh, what's powering them. And this one underneath the clamshell hood is an LS1. This is the iconic motor. You may recognize it from every hot rod swap you've ever seen on YouTube, but it started life here in the Corvette. It makes 350 horsepower. It's got the Corvette valve covers. You got the long intake going right down into the front there. This is what began the LS craze, guys, this car. And that's pretty iconic. Now that's about a very quick summary of the C5. And well, they've been around for a while. If you haven't seen a C5, you know, look them up. But let's go see what changed in uh, just 24 short years. And over here, we have the C8. Yes, three generations away from the C5 and a massive departure from the C5. Now the C6 was kind of an evolution of the C5. The C7 was completely new and they did as much as they could with the engine being in the front of the Corvette. So what's left to do? Well, move it to the back. And it's something they've been wanting to do since the late 50s, but they were finally able to do it starting with the 2020 Corvette C8. Now this one is a 2023, so this is about as updated as it can possibly get. And I love this one because this is about exactly the spec I would order my own in. So let's take a look around the C8. First of all, looks wise, you could very easily convince an alien from another planet that these two cars are not both the same make, but they are. Obviously with the mid-engine design, this one looks totally like a supercar, whereas the C5 looks like a traditional sports car. Look at all the angles and the vents and the scoops and this aggressive front arrow. And what do you think is underneath here? Well, for one, my backpack, but there's no motor there because as I've been saying, it's a mid-engine Corvette. So we walk around to the back here and these side scoops are not only functional, but necessary. And we open up the back and you can see, get this thing past this big wang here. And there is the LT2, a far cry from the LS1 before it. With the LT2, we're looking at 6.2 liters of displacement compared to the LS1's 5.7. and 
495 horsepower compared to a measly 350 of 24 years ago. But look at this thing. Absolutely a work of art, direct injection, beautifully displayed under the back glass here. And look, you have even more storage. This really is a crazy departure in 24 short years. But like I said, they've been wanting to do this for a long, long time. Now, check out the interior and see how far that came. And you know what, we have the top down in the C5, so I think it's only fair to take the top off of the C8. It helps you see the interior better, and I think it looks cooler. Okay, and there, and minus the New Jersey dump truck in the background, that is a cool looking car. Look at that, God, I love target tops. But look at this interior, absolutely futuristic. Even for 2024, a completely driver-centric driver's area, even all of the controls going down the side here. I don't know if you've ever seen how much it's a divider between the driver and the passenger, but it is a significant one. And of course, can't talk about the C8 without its infotainment system, so check this thing out. Screens everywhere, even the way to get it in gear are pull paddles and push buttons, completely futuristic stuff. And of course, the steering wheel, if you've never noticed, is square. And not only does that help you know where your hands are on the wheel, but it also helps you see the huge screen very, very well. Of course, we also have Apple CarPlay, which is an absolute necessity in any modern vehicle. And if you can see that on the windshield, heads up display in full color. Very, very cool. Of course, behind me, we also have a speaker and a wireless charger. And then behind that, the motor. But of course, the best feature on most new GM vehicles is the rear view mirror. Because, well, if you look here, it's a real reflection. And then you flip it, and now it's a camera. Now, of course, I've never driven the high wing model of the C8 before, and it just is a view of the wing. Still helpful nonetheless. Now, let's get these cars out on the road and talk about the difference in driving experience. Okay, out on the road in the C8. Now, I've done a video with one of these before. I've rented one for my ex-girlfriend in Arizona and she hated it. Check out that video if you haven't. But this is my first open top experience in the C8 because the C8 convertible I rented in Arizona, the top didn't work. Needless to say, this one's a little bit more functional. Going through the curves here, look at these trees. You can definitely tell I'm not in Kansas anymore. But man, this thing. I mean, 495 horsepower, but in this layout, with this dual clutch, absolute rocket ship. I actually have curves to deal with here, unlike in Kansas, and I can tell you, handling is amazing. Oh, and then you can open it back up after the corners, it's so good. Oh no, a stoplight, a chance to use one of my favorite features, launch control. Oh, oh, that is one heck of a launch. Of course, the computer helps mitigate traction and everything there, but with the engine in the back and 305 tires, woo, that is fun. This car has the Z51 package, which of course gives you all the goodies, including the good exhaust and five extra horsepower, bigger Brembo brakes, better tuned suspension, bigger sway bars, and I'm telling you, this is the road for this thing. <laughs> uh, Give it another rip. We have to, that's what this is for. Oh man. Yeah, so I'm driving these in kind of an odd order. I know that because, well, this is the newest, fastest version of the base Corvette. And uh, of course it's gonna be sharp and fast, but does it have everything? Does it have that old school charm that the C5 does? Well. We're just gonna have to find out when we switch to the C5. But man, this thing is an absolute riot. Oh, and with the twist of this knob, I can make it even sportier as if I needed help. <laughs> I'm telling you folks, top off in a C8 is uh, pretty hard to beat. on the upshift. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, this has been a hoot, but let's go get in the C5. Okay then, out in the C5. What 
did 24 years of difference make? I know, like I said, I kind of drove them in a weird order, but I drove this car practically all day yesterday. I even drove it all the way to New York City and back, which was wild for me. First time seeing the skyline. I did it all for a video that will be on Fan of Them's channel, so stay tuned. I'll keep you in the loop on the descriptions on that. It was a really cool biopic type of thing. But that being said, we are out in the C5 right now. Now, I know the C8 had a target top and the open top experience was something, but this is a true convertible and there's nothing quite like it. Guess what? You can see what I'm doing right now. This one has a manual transmission. And with the top actually fully down, unlike a Targa, still get a great sound. And man, whew, that's a ton of speed. I know 350 horsepower might not seem like a lot today, but believe me, this car doesn't weigh that much. It's got pretty wide tires. It is plenty to feel fast and potentially get yourself in some trouble on roads like this. This is something. The shifter feels great. Excellent positive engagement. Clutch feels good. Brakes are really good. This is awesome. Seeing this road with these trees in this car. And honestly, it's saying something that GM makes a car so good that you can drive it like this 25 years later and still be impressed. That is a great platform and it's what makes the C5 so iconic. We've reached a stoplight here and unlike the C8, this does not have launch control. I am the launch control. So let's see how she does when the light turns green. Some tire spin. Oh, guys, believe me, still plenty fast. 350 horsepower may not seem like a lot by today's standards, but this thing doesn't weigh a whole lot. And it's got big wide tires at the back. This is more than enough to feel like a ton of horsepower. And of course you get to hear the engine that much more because of the open top experience. Man, this is incredible. Well, here's the deal guys. It's not as fast as the C8. It's not as loud as the C8. And sure, the interior is a little dated, but you know what makes it better? This right here. This experience that I can accelerate out of this corner, shift, and I can feel everything that the car is doing. That's the experience you don't get in the C8. The C8 was helping me around the corners. The C8 was helping me with everything. And it's great, it's fast, but it's not this. And there's something about the manual Corvette, old school V8, big torque, convertible, driving through the curves experience that no modern car can replicate. I mean, look at this. Coming around the corner, third gear, right here, and all of the torque you could ever want in the world, and I got to shift it myself. This right here, and this experience, this feeling, this steering, this whole event is what makes the C5 that much better than the C8. So there you go, guys. Both cars are a ton of fun. Both cars are very different. Both are fast in their own right, but somewhere between 1999 and 2023, we lost that mechanical feel. And you do get that in the 1999 C5 Corvette. So while the C8 might be crazier looking and faster and safer and all these other things, you just don't get a driving experience like the C5 anymore. And that's why the C5 is better than the C8. And this C5 could be yours if you use my link at fanofthem.com slash Elliot. Remember, all you have to do is buy a collectible item and you get entered for a chance to win this very C5 that I've been driving today in this video. It's a great chance to support this channel and heck, who doesn't want a chance to win their very own Corvette? Remember, go to the link in my description, fanofthem.com slash Elliot and get yourself a collectible and get entered to win this Corvette. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks, fan of them, for all of this experience. And I will see you guys on the next video. Be sure to follow me at all my social medias and all that normal jazz. And we'll see you guys back in Kansas. I'm going to miss the highway noise and, of course, my dump truck. But, you know, there's no place like home. And, well, Kansas is home. Thanks for the sights and sounds, New Jersey. And for all those wondering, no, I normally don't drive convertibles with the windows up. I think it looks... Well, embarrassing, but I had to do it for the audio quality. Meanwhile, people are wondering why I'm driving around looking like a weirdo with his windows up, talking to no one. But this is the life. And this is a corner. Woo! And a mountain of torque. I mean, this thing is 
just unreal. I mean, I cannot believe this car is 25 years old. Absolutely cannot. I'm not even slowing down for this corner. There's bumps. It's not getting unsettled. This, it, it, GM made a heck of a thing when they made the C5. I'll tell you that. Thank you.